Welcome to Living Healthy Chicago. I'm Jane Monzuris. You know, it's always important to stay on top of your health and check in with your doctor regularly. Recognizing potential problems early can help your doctors guide you back to good health. So let's find out how this next man took action when he found out he had high cholesterol. Like most of us, Bob Fogel is careful to check in with his doctor regularly. I like to think I'm pretty good getting annual physicals, and my doctor reminds me if I don't. Once or twice a year, you find out how it's going. It was on one of those routine visits 15 to 20 years ago that his blood test came back with some concerning results. One of the things we would check is blood tests to check cholesterol, triglycerides, and mine was rather elevated. All of his values were really out of whack. So the good cholesterol, the HDL, was way too low. His LDL, or the bad cholesterol, was way too high. And interestingly, in Bob's case, his triglycerides were really high. What's this non-HDL? I mean, is that good that it's lower? Or? Cholesterol and triglycerides are really fat, oily, fat-like substances that are in your blood. And in order to travel around your blood, cholesterol and triglycerides actually travel in these individual particles we call lipoproteins. There's different sizes of these particles. If you have a higher level of high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, or HDL, on average, you're actually at lower cardiovascular disease risk. That's why we call HDL the good cholesterol. But then if you move to slightly larger particles called LDL cholesterol, or low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, it turns out that those are positively associated and actually cause most forms of atherosclerosis and atherosclerotic-related disease like heart attack. The thing about cholesterol and triglycerides is you, you can't see it. You don't really feel it. There are no signs or symptoms other than a blood test. That's one of the reasons why the American Heart Association recommends that adults over 20 years old get their serum cholesterol checked every four to six years. Adopting a heart-healthy lifestyle can do a lot to actually reduce their overall cardiovascular disease risk, even independent of what it does to their cholesterol levels. With his family in mind, Bob worked with his doctors to take action and make some changes. My wife, I want to be there for her. I've got three kids, I want to be around for them. So if, if I can modify my behavior, the hope is I'm reducing risk factors. The first step was medication, followed by a change in diet. They're overweight, having a slight calorie deficit so that they start to lose weight, and then getting most of their calories from plant-based sources, eating a modest amount of carbohydrates, usually in the form of whole grains, really trying to minimize simple sugars and minimize high salt foods. I just try to pay attention to avoiding fats or avoiding sugars and doing my best. Bob's doctors also encouraged him to get moving. I have an elliptical machine that uh, I try to do two or three times a week. Try not to sit on my butt too much is, is a goal. Moving is better than sitting. I feel energized as a result. Regular physical activity can help in, in multiple ways. Our skeletal muscle uses triglycerides actually as an energy source. And so when you exercise and engage your skeletal muscles repeatedly, then the triglycerides that are actually in some of those lipoprotein particles get metabolized. And therefore, the amount of triglyceride in your blood goes down. Bob also didn't have to look far to find an eager workout partner. We have a, a golden retriever, so I walk him. He's two years old and strong and likes to walk fast, and so I use him as a, an assistant to get me to, to walk fast. Just taking those little moments to be as active as I can, I think, is helpful. Bob hopes to inspire others to learn their numbers and take action if their cholesterol levels are high. Recognize that you do have control uh, over your diet, your activity. You have to recognize those things that contribute to that risk and take as many steps as you can to alter or reduce that risk. If there's some lifestyle changes you have to make, they're well worth it. Through optimization of his lifestyle, his risk for developing a heart disease are much, much lower. So I think what's, what's most important is that people know their numbers, okay? and that you have your cholesterol checked at some point. But you also have to keep in mind the, the context as well, which means you need to know what your blood pressure is, you need to try to maintain an optimal body weight, follow a heart healthy lifestyle. It's something we can do for ourselves, so why not? I think I'm doing well, and if I can do it, anybody can do it, that's for sure. Do you want more Living Healthy content? Well, check out these videos right here, and then subscribe for more right here.